Hello everybody, hopefully your quarantine is going all right. Mine's not going too bad. Today I have an interesting story about the US government trying to withdraw troops from Afghanistan. However, the US military is pretty unhappy about that, but I'm going to take an opposite stance of the US military using facts and sources. So I'm gonna read you what the Military Times has to say, which is the US military's independent media outlet. I'm gonna read you what they say, and then I'm gonna start talking about what my views are supplemented with facts and sources. Also, all my sources are in the description box below. I study U.S. security policy. My goal is to get my Ph.D. So that's my background and all the nuances. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So here's what they say, quote, the United States is on track to meet its commitment to the Taliban to withdraw several thousand troops from Afghanistan by summer. Even as violence flares, the peace process is stalled and Kabul struggles in political deadlock. U.S. officials say they will reduce to 8,600 troops by July 15th and abandon five bases. And by next spring, all foreign forces are supposed to withdraw, ending America's longest war. Yet the outlook for peace is cloudy at best. In the absence of Afghan peace talks, the Trump administration may face the prospect of fully withdrawing even as the Taliban remains at war with the government. Yeah, okay. Well, first things first, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what exactly is the mission in Afghanistan? Well, there's actually two, apparently, and this is according to the U.S. State Department. Number one, a bilateral counterterrorism mission in cooperation with Afghan forces. And number two, participation in RSM, which is the Resolute Support Mission. So RSM, essentially, that's further training, advice, and assistance to Afghan security forces. These are things that NATO in particular is emphasizing. And so right now we have about 14,000 NATO personnel span across 39 countries helping with RSM. And so, for example, something that they would support would be the negotiations between the United States, Afghan forces, and the Taliban. That's something that they would support. So on the one hand, we're supporting an operation that is backed by false statistics through the Afghanistan papers, which I'll get into in a second. And on the other hand, there's a indirect role that NATO is supporting. And so going back to this one hand right here, in terms of occupation and military essentially the, the military, more militaristic wing of the efforts in Afghanistan right now, there's something called the Afghanistan Papers. And what that was is that it was leaked by the Washington Post after a three-year-long legal battle. The U.S. government decided to try to figure out where the corruption and inefficiencies were in the Afghanistan war effort. What they found was that there was no serious mission in Afghanistan. There was no serious goal. So they could say something, but they weren't actually supporting that mission. In addition to that, they were lying about the successes and they were lying about the deaths and a couple of other things as well. So when we're trying to figure out, well, hold on a second, should we stay in Afghanistan? Where's the success up to this point? Now you could argue, well, hold on a second. It's because of the military that we are getting the Taliban to the negotiation table. What statistics are you finding that would allow you to infer that? Because you could guess that, but that's all it is, is that's a guess. Because right now, there is no concrete successes or advantages that we had received as a result of being there. We just had essentially a wilted public support for the war. There are people literally right now who are 17 years old. The Afghanistan war is 18 years old, almost two decades. It's actually becoming more of a business. Fun fact, there's 12,000 U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan right now, but there are 5,000 military contractors who are directly involved in the war effort. Those aren't considering the other 20,000 contractors that are used for non-military jobs. And if you were to count the 20,000, there's 20, well, gotcha, yeah, 25,000 contractors in Afghanistan right now. The head of the Afghan policy for Obama and Bush. Sources, again, in the description box below. He literally came out and said, there's no point of being here. We have no idea what we're doing. And now the U.S. military is coming out and saying, well, hold on a second. No, we need to be here. Well, if you have an issue with something that is currently going on, you need to offer a counter proposal. So for example, the military, if you have a problem with us being there, where is your counter proposal? Are you saying we should be there and do the same thing that we've been doing? Because that hasn't been working. Are you saying that we should tweak something and add more troops or less troops? Because we've done both. And how did that help? So if you have a problem, create a counter proposal, but you don't because it doesn't work. That's the problem. So what exactly am I arguing that we do? 
Well, I think we should focus on the resolute support mission in order to address the humanitarian crisis and negotiation process. Because right now there's what, a million Afghani refugees that went to Iran that I did a story on and now they're coming back. So that would probably be important to focus on. And if United States soldiers do come back to Afghanistan, we should have it passed through Congress like we're supposed to do. So in this case, have less unilateral action by the president because that would be, well, better. But right now, we're fighting a failed policy to achieve an unreasonable mission statement. So my argument to the military overall, we literally shouldn't be there. You have no facts that are reliable to back up your claim. That is all.